So it's the last game of the Premier League season and we are trying to secure our position in the final table on the final day. Hit like and subscribe, let's go marching on together. What's up guys, Chasing Layman here with episode number 19 of Marching On Together. Today we face Chelsea, old rivals of Leeds on the final day of the season. Since we last met, which was the Liverpool game, we have only played once and we have played Manchester United and beat them 3-0. Goals from Gotzi, Gelhart and Umtiti with Buendia getting himself sent off. So beating United, having spent the last half hour of the game with 10 men, still a pretty impressive performance. But that brings us into today's game where we are just going to see what we can get done. See if we can beat Chelsea as the league table stands. If we manage to beat Liverpool and Liverpool somehow lose to Stoke who are already relegated. Yeah, we would finish above Liverpool. We would finish fifth. We're safe in sixth but we're just playing for fifth. Hopefully we'll get it done. Let's see what happens. Team wise, it's largely what you'd expect today. It's Bailo, Yedvai, Koch, Umtiti, Sarachi, Persin, Skip. Phillips and Ertzi with Jones and Gelhart up top. We've got Lukabakio, Drama, Sorensen, Kovnaki, Gotzi, Andrea Shevic and Ruhan on the bench. So looking fairly familiar. I'm aware that we have some injury problems that aren't showing on there. But, you know, I've got them filtered out because big brain moves. In terms of the players missing, this should hopefully show us them. We've got Verba missing. Buendia obviously is suspended following his sending off against United. So, you know, it's slightly weaker than we'd like to be, but we should still have enough about us to get this job done. Although, we've never beaten Chelsea. So there is that. Let's see what happens. Into the dressing room is going to be ignore the media, play your natural game. And people seem okay with that, which is why I must do a tunnel interview. You've, not lo you've lost the last three matches against Chelsea. You can't really be able to end the hoodoo today. There's no reason we can't win. You will hear me describe a terrible record against Frank Lampard in your career. Why you found it so hard to beat him? We're going to say Frank's one of the best managers in the game because in this universe he actually is. Do you think it's important to lay this particular record to rest? Are you confident in making that happen here? I want to win every match. I don't care who the manager is. That's pretty much my outlook. And we come to Stamford Bridge. Final day of the season. We need to win and we need Liverpool to lose to Stoke. Let's see what happens. Early throw in for us on the far side. Yedvai takes it, goes long looking for Curtis Jones, who heads on to Joe Gelhart. Gelhart is through. Gelhart can't quite finish it though. And we're looking for Gelhart's 30th goal of the season. Ertzi and Di Lorenzo having a bit of a come together out there now. And Kovacic for Chelsea plays it to Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo finds Guedes, but great tackle by Sami and Titi. And that's gone out for a corner. And can we? Get this defended. That's what we need to do. Get this defended. See what we can do. Cross comes in. Headed away by Koch. And Ertzi can't quite beat Mason Mount to the ball. And this is all action all the time right now. As Calderon with a throw to Jaden Sancho for Chelsea. Finds Havertz. Havertz has a pop and Bilo is equal to it. And can we hit them on the break here? Bilo with a very interesting goal kick or kick out from goal. Ertz, he makes it into the box, has a pop when he should have cut it back, and Keeper will save that all day. As a free kick for Chelsea, edge of the box, De Jong is going through the man taking it, puts it in, Bilo can't get there. Frankie De Jong beats his Dutch national teammate, and I mean, you can't save those. You just can't save those. I'm not going to hold that against Bilo. There was nothing he could do there. Curl right round the wall. Bilo got a hand to it, which is probably the best anyone could ask of him. And we go a goal down. Corner for Chelsea now with Mason Mount puts it into the box. Havertz heads off the bar and it falls to Frankie de Jong. And we now go two goals down. I'm going to break the team because Phillips and Skip are not performing. Ertzi not performing. The two strikers have barely been involved in the game. It's really Koch and Yedvai keeping us in this at all. And of course, Bilo. And two defenders doing their job does not really do much to help us stay in the game. And we make it to half-time and we are two goals down. And once we say I'm happy with your performance, which is ridiculous, your first half performance wasn't good enough, show me something else. And I'm going to do some individual boys buck your ideas up to most of the team. If I'm honest, most of the team, you're going to see just about everyone 
is about to get the old pointy finger I'm not happy with your performance today. They seem motivated. That's good. I don't think there's anyone else I can do anything. I mean, there's no point me telling Bilo and Yed by and Co to buck their ideas up because they're doing the best they can. Let's see if the rest of the team will show up, help them out of it, and see if we can get back into this game. Keeper on the ball now for Chelsea and hoofs it upfield and finds Jaden Sancho. Sancho on a bit of a mazy dribble. No one's going to get near him because we don't have anyone with that kind of pace at the back. Bilo luckily saves it and that's the end of the highlight not much happening there mason mal gets himself a free kick puts it into the box guedes heads it away and we are sinking without trace of the bridge and all hopes of that fifth place finish and the extra money that would have brought in for us are now pretty much down the swanee i am going to have to make some big changes and i don't know what they're going to be because i could quite frankly pull half this team off very happily Throw in now with Calderon to have it. Sorry, I was lost in, lost in thought for a second. That was weird. <laughs> Lorenzo, he gets the ball, but it's tackled by Sarachi. And now Jones on the ball, plays it through, looking for Gelhart, who's had a... They've both had poor games. Gelhart is finally through, and Gelhart scores his 30th of the season. Small consolation for us, quite frankly. I have made three changes in midfield, though. I brought Sorensen, Andrea Shevich, and Ruan on, because the midfield were performing so poorly... At the time, Jones and Gelhart were doing slightly better than them. They just kind of dropped off since. But we've finally seen a goal, and Gelhart is the scorer, which will at least make him look like he had a slightly better game than he has done. Hopefully, that will fire us up into some kind of idea. Ziyech puts the ball into the box, and that's probably going to be a penalty. Sorensen apparently shoved Jaden Sancho. Lee Mason's going to go and watch the tiny TV because he's missing Everdale. What's going to happen is he going to make a choice that's good for us? Probably not. It's probably going to be a pen. And what's the decision? Come on, hurry up. It is a pen. There we go. It was always coming. I'll be honest. It was always coming. Can we get a save from Bilo here? We can't. Frankie de Jong completes his hat trick, which, frankly, for a centre-half is pretty special anyway. I'm going to do another berate of the team because they've been appalling and it's just about making this as little of an embarrassment on the last day as we can i think um titi and sarachi have both been bad curtis jones bad person bad yedvai bad i mean just what do you say the players have not turned in a performance that looked like they wanted to win today and there's a court uh, free kicks already calderon to kovacic for chelsea Havertz plays it across to ngolo kante kante out wide, looking for Calderon to Kovacic. Ball into the box. Ziyech heads it down for Jesus. And he was offside. Surely, surely offside. We're going to go to VAR, find out what's happening down at Emmerdale Farm. And it has been called back for offside. Disallowed. That's, I mean, that's a thing, I guess. It's the best you can say. That's a thing. Ziyech head down for Jesus, but he was offside. And so, confirmation of two things. One, we have lost 4-1. And two, Chelsea have won the Premier League by beating us today, which I forgot was on the card form. I didn't highlight that before the game because I thought they'd already won it, which explains why they've played so well. They have had a league to win. That would have been great background information for me to have given at the start of the episode, probably. But there we go. Chelsea are the champions of England. We will finish the season in sixth place, but that should be good enough to get us into the Europa League. And, you know, we're going to be good sports. We'll stay for Chelsea's celebration for the traditional goalkeeper cartwheel, all the good stuff that comes with that. But, you know, 4-1 was not a way to go down. The only highlight was that we saw Joe Gelhart get his 30th goal of the season which, you know, is a good return for him, quite frankly. Despite the result, I'm pleased with your... We'll say that just to make everyone happy, but I'm not. I'm not happy with losing 4-1 on the final day. Luckily, we've got a summer to recover and a transfer window coming up. Before we wrap up the episode, though, I'm going to go through the end-of-season awards, so stick around. So we've made it to the end-of-season review. Let's have a look how things shaped up for us this season, starting with the new arrivals. 
And in terms of the best of our new signings, Justin Bilo has been the guy picked out. 24 million from Feyenoord. Came in between the sticks. Looked really good. As I'm planning for the next season, though, the new transfer window coming up, he may not be our number one next season. I might have my sights set a little higher on somewhere a little better. However, I would say equally important was the £24.5 million pound signing of Buendia, who played just as well, and of Gotzi, who played better but not as often, for 6.75 from Torino. Obviously, Curtis Jones, a perennial best signing of the season. In terms of those players who have left this season, I'd say the best, sell, the best sales I've made have been Rodrigo and Felipe Suarez to Beijing Wuhan for a combined of total of around 40 million. Klitsch as well, 1.9 for a 33-year-old defender is a good sale. Florente for a 30-year-old centre-back for 23 million. Pretty strong. Bruno Tabata has done quite well for Everton, but still 34 million in the bank. A lot of these signing the sales sort of gone very well for us. I mean, Eunice, I brought in at the start of the season on a free and I sold for 6.25 million. I don't feel bad about that. I feel bad about Rojas going for 14.5. So I feel bad about Meslier going for 52 million. He might be younger than Bilo, but to be honest, he's not played as well this season, so that's worked out all right. And same with Daniel Eberson, our understudy goalkeeper, that we sold for 2.7. It's been pretty strong all the way through. Noam Kenner went to Newcastle. Didn't have a great season for them. The fans were upset that I sold them. 7.5 million in the bank. Don't feel guilty. Herrera, 9.5. Don't feel guilty. Wouldn't have played for us. Stuart Dallas, just shy of 10 million for a 33-year-old winger. He's pretty strong, you know, business. Ruben Blanco, who we signed as an understudy and then sold. 11.5 million. Didn't play very well for Bologna. I don't think I've made a bad sale this season. I've had time will tell with Fabian Neglin, but otherwise it's worked out quite well for us. In terms of results, we were expected to finish mid-table, finish sixth, so we have finished above where we were expected to do, to do so. We've filled 93% of Alan Roden average this season. Joe Gilhart, 22 goals in the Premier League. So their confirmation, we finished sixth with 70 points. Just 14 points shy of Champions Chelsea, actually. It's been fairly tight all the way through. I mean, if you look at it, 16 points from 1st to 7th is a pretty close spread if you look through the history of the league. If we look at the FA Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Everton, but we were predicted to reach the 5th round. So actually that's worked out okay. And the competition top scorer, Emiliano Buendia. And in the Carabao Cup, we finished runners-up, making the final, losing narrowly to Manchester United. Gelhart getting 6 goals in the competition again, and we've exceeded our expectation. Our moments to remember were a 10-2 win over Norwich. I don't think we did that on camera. You might remember me telling you about it, but we don't think we did it on camera. We also beat Tottenham 2-1, not quite as memorable, and Watford 7-2, which worked out okay. And that was the goal in which Joe Gelhart scored the goal of the season, which still, frustratingly, I cannot click on and show you. Financially, we've done very well this season as well. We're up on sponsorship. We are up on hospitality. We're up on prize money. 20 million, in fact, up on prize money this season. We're up on match day commercial and retail. We're slightly down on broadcast revenue, but 900k is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. Total merch sales, 2.48 million. Sold just shy of 19,000 shirts. And the guys you expect to be selling shirts, Phillips, Emmy, and Gelhart, and Albert Kovnacki and Wesley, slightly more curious and so in terms of our lineup this season we rotated the team a fair amount this season however our key players played a major role in how the season turned out so our best 11 was Bilo, Yedby, Koch, Umtiti and Sarachi, Dia, Phillips, Skip and Ruan with Gelhart and Jones up top I'd have said that's fairly accurate as our best 11. And finally for the end of season was the accolades the fan start of the season was team Yedby Young player of the season, Joe Gelhart. Signing of the season, Justin Bilo. Goal of the season to Gelhart. Top goal scorer to Gelhart. Most assists to Buendia. Player of the match awards, Buendia. Highest average rating for Gelhart. And most passes completed per 90 minutes were, was for Calvin Phillips. Joe Gelhart, well, they broke our record for overall goals by a player in the season. Buendia broke the record for assists by a player in the season. Bilo, with 15 clean sheets, broke the record for the most clean sheets by a player in the season. Most player of the match awards record broken. Yedby broke the record for worst discipline despite not getting sent off. He did get 22 yellow cards. And Ilian Meslier was our highest transfer fee ever received 
and of course the English Young Players Player of the Year was Joe Gilhart. So now all we need to do is find out what we have to spend in Thursday's transfer special. And so confirmation of our budgets for the upcoming transfer window. 55.3 million to spend, a 1.9 million wage budget. Some of that's going to get shuffled around a bit so I can bring in actual players because as you may or may not have noticed already, I'm already spending more than my wage budget on wages. So we're probably going to shift a little bit of that over just to give us some wiggle room. We'll find out. But that is for Thursday's episode, not for right now. In the meantime, guys, thank you for watching. Find me as always on the socials below. I'm on Twitter, Insta, and Patreon at Chasing Lamely. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Magic graphic right there will remind you to like, subscribe, ring the bell. Select on notifications or tell you want to go live with things like the Cup. Well, currently the FM FA Cup, which is ongoing. I'll be managing Arsenal again. Anyway, in the meantime, guys, I have as always been Chasing Lamely, and I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one.